just a couple of years ago. Yes, they did. Union Terminal, there it is. Way to go, Dan. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right, let's go outside. Rob is outside in, in a car. All right, Pat, thank you very much. We've been talking about it all morning long. A car that has been painted over to promote chemistry. Would you do this to your car? We're going to introduce you to the man who did this to his car. Coming up after a break, we are back in two minutes. Stay with us, please. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to throw some familiar names at you now. Beekman, we know him from Beekman's World. Also, we know Bill Nye, the science guy. What they do is they try to make learning fun, specifically science. We're going to introduce you to a local man who has done that with chemistry. And if you question that, take a look at his car, Randy Schroeder. Hey, man, thank you very much for doing this. And, and why did you do this? Well, I started with a folding periodic table to line up elements that bond together so it made it easier for the kids. And what I did, I put a poster over the dent in the door, and I would come out of the store and I would notice kids would be looking at that. So later on, when I did a poster that's a continuous ribbon design of the table of the elements, I did that to the car. It's a $75 car I bought in 1982. So where the table of the elements encircles the car is what the design is. And right when I finished the painting of it, Glenn Seaborg, who discovered plutonium and 10 other elements, he gave a talk in my community college, and I backed in as he was leaving. I said, please, you got to come sign my car. It was right when they officially named it. So Glenn Seaborg, who unfortunately passed away last February, has autographed the car. Here's him and I. Then I drove across country over the Rocky Mountains to a convention in Waterloo, Canada last summer. And then in Boston, a guy, Jacob Marinsky, here discovered Prometheum. Uh -huh. So I have a guy from MIT that discovered an element, signed, put his initials, and Dr. Seaborg here. And then it blossomed. If we can come around here, I okay. came up. Let's came walk up, around the back of the car. I came up with a Mickey Mole representation. You can see the bumper stickers, too. I got cute little things. My other cars are Mercedes, benzene, honk if you like water. I wonder when I'm driving in rainstorms how people take that. Let's take a look at that. And, and tell me, how did it grow to this? How did it grow to this? Is this just something that just grew out of control as you got more interested yes, in exactly. chemistry? Yes, exactly. The less inhibited I became about teachers looking at me like I was playing with crayons, and the more I kept the kids, kids, college kids in mind, the more creativity came to me. Is there anything that's so important is making learning fun so people are more apt to learn? I think teachers try and impress each other when we got to impress the kids. And that's where the car, I had no idea that I, I'd just drive anywhere, and kids are like, oh, that's awesome. So they think chemistry is awesome. And how long have you been working on this car? And um, what more are you going to add to it? Well, I got to keep touching it up. And hopefully, there may have been a new element discovery 114. So as they discover new ones, I'll be doing that. How do you know you get through that to kids? They At what tell point me. do you know? Well, there was one point in Grand, um, I forget, Grand Junction, Colorado, where I sat at a pool on the other side of the fence. And I would just listen to kids as they walked by. You know, I mean, seventh grade girls that are like, oh, that's awesome. Look at that. And I'd hear them, oh, it's the table of the elements. Right. You know? And I could just hear it, you know, and I would listen. They, I wasn't there or anything. So for the Cincinnati stuff, too, I wanted to show I took the Cincinnati ball bouncing guy. Uh -huh. And he's my Mickey Mole in the back. But this is the water representation I was talking about. Maybe we can't get it with the sun. But I get seventh graders drawing Mickey Mole, which is a water molecule. And Mickey and Mimi, when water grabs onto another water with his electron pair hands, well, pH is based when a proton's pulled off. So I get him doing Mikey Mole Tyson bites off of Vander Molefield's proton ear. I think that's, this is a great idea, yeah, especially when you get through to kids. Uh -huh. Randy Schroeder, a local man, did this to his car, all in an effort of making chemistry fun for kids. Thanks for joining us this oh, morning sure. and getting up with thank us. You. And I also thank you for the coffee, too, because you brought the coffee by. <laughs> Thanks to the people at Starbucks downtown for doing that. Put me in a good mood. You know what? Yeah. Um, Kristen McCarthy was the one that named Mimi Moles. She's over in Delhi, my cousin, and hi to Grandma. Hi to Grandma, Thanks, and happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up after a break, we're going to be talking about... So, after driving around downtown for an hour, we made it. Oh, that's it. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I'll this back up. To be in. <laughs> but not every car here is whimsical. This Oldsmobile was parked near a brick wall that fell during the Loma Prieta earthquake. 
Now the driver, who still uses this car every day to get to work, calls it 5.04 p.m. A custom-made blend of skill and pride, and for those lucky enough to see them on the road, it's free art in the fast lane. In San Francisco, Claudia Cowan, New Center 4, on the night beat. 5.04 p.m., now that was a, that's a great car. Coming traveling around the country in a beat-up car just so you can teach. News Channel 50's Curtis Kim found one North Bay man who does just that, locating him on a recent trip to Sebastopol as he was making his way along the North Bay trails. Actually, when I first saw it, I thought it was a, one of those like demolition cars, you know, a joke that you just go out and wreck. But what caught me was the white in the door and on that is all your minerals and elements. Randy Schroeder is truly the king of the road. That's because the Sonoma State grad spends much of his time traveling around the country in this old car he bought for 75 bucks 20 years ago. It had a few dents so he did some quick cover-up work. Well it began when I devised a way of folding the periodic table to teach chemistry for young people. I had a dent in the door that I, I blew this up to a poster and I taped it over the dent in the door. It was real hard to find a door. Then he began to notice something. I'd come out of the supermarket and they'd be out there looking at the periodic table of the elements. And I thought, boy, if they look at that, if I painted the whole car up, they would really go crazy over it. So for the past few years, Schroeder has been traveling across the country in his portable classroom, teaching just about anyone who will listen the periodic table of elements. First, I thought it was a uh, kind of like a protest political statement environmentally, but then I started, you know, realizing after seeing the different chemistry abbreviations that it was a uh, tool for teaching. Curtis, yeah. how would you like to take the periodic table car quiz? Cool, sounds good. Tell me, if you take oxygen and it would react with two hydrogens, what molecule do you think you'd get from that? A H2O, water. water. Exactly. You know, my radiator's overheating here. You think you might be able to go get me some? <laughs> Thanks a lot. So back on the road, named after one of his local idols, Nobel Prize winner William F. Libby, Schroeder is off again, heading down another North Bay Trails. In Sebastopol, Curtis Kim, News Channel 50. If you would like to get a hold of Science's Golden Mobile, please call Schroeder's local voicemail, 707-952-5912. The car has already crossed the country several times. Thank you. Well, Kim, let's look at your nail beds. <laughs> And the car has been a great vehicle.
And so for the purpose of the tape, Schroeder spelled? S-C-H-R-O-E-D-E-R. -E -E and you have a title at all, if anything, Randy? For me or the yeah, car? Yeah, no, for you. Do you oh, call yourself I'm, anything? I'm becoming the split personality between Mickey Mole and the periodic table car guy. <laughs> so let's take it from the top. What is this automobile? How did it come about? Well, it began when I devised a way of folding the periodic table to teach chemistry for young people. And um, when you fold it, it just lines the elements up that bond together. So it occurred to me one day, I had a dent in the door that I, I blew this up to a poster and I taped it over the dent in the door. It was real hard to find a door. So consequently, I noticed that kids would I'd come out of the supermarket and they'd be out there looking at the periodic table of the elements. And I thought, boy, if they look at that, if I painted the whole car up, they would really go crazy over it. And sure enough, I did a poster design where the elements were encircling the earth. And with my old $75 car I bought almost 20 years ago, what better thing to do with it than paint the elements on it? So that's pretty much how it started. So where have you been and what have you done? I mean, obviously, uh, over this period of time, you've obviously done some traveling. It began around the Bay Area in that, because there was so much Bay Area history with Cal Berkeley and the element discoveries. I started going to conventions, and the, there was a biennial conference on chemical education in Waterloo, Canada. And after that, there was an American Chemical Society meeting in Boston. So I thought, no, I take the car coast to coast. So I drove it up through the, over the Rocky Mountains through Cincinnati to Detroit, up through Canada. I ended up going up through Montreal to Boston. And um, since then, I've been back. I came down through New York City and back. I just got through doing a coast to coast to coast to coast run, which was from San Francisco to Charleston, South Carolina, to the Gulf Coast in New Orleans, back to San Francisco. Logged a lot of miles. Yeah. And, and everywhere you go along the way, what is it you do, Randy? Well, it's funny because when I was trying to promote the folding table, I was only getting to talk to publishers and academia professors and things of that nature. And the car has been a great vehicle for chemical discussion. I get truck drivers, uh, kids at roadside rests. You know, people literally come out of the woodwork with their chemistry stories. You know, everybody has a, an interest or some, an uncle or somebody that studied chemistry or something. You know, so there's something that they want to talk about. But without a periodic table car, there's no way to do it. So I pretty much do these little lectures showing everybody in a one minute lecture how the periodic table folds and the bonding. I go through the history of the naming of elements, which was done at Cal Berkeley by Glenn Seaborg and others. So it's a traveling one on the trunk is a history. On this side's the education. Here I do a Mickey Mole water representation. I teach pH to kids by Mikey Mole Tyson biting off of Vander Molefield's proton ear. And, um, and then there's art to it also. So it covers pretty much every facet of education and chemistry. And I think you were telling me since you painted the car, new elements have been discovered oh, and had to be added. Three this year. And Cal Berkeley is on top again with 118 and 116 at the Cade. So they have the two top highest elements. Got to get some funny looks. Randy driving a car like this, people might think it's just some sort of jalopy with some paint job on it, but that's not true. Well, they think it's graffiti, you know, until they look, because there's certain angles. If you look at one angle, it looks like the elements, you recognize them. If you catch the side with the dent in the door, people can look and just, it looks like a beat up $75 car somebody bought 20 years ago, you know. Do they catch on as the periodic tables after they look it's at it? It's surprising. Uh, there were a few young women today that walked by, you know, high school girls, and they knew right away. You know, they recognized sodium. And um, some people just, even after you tell them it's the table of the elements, you know, they just don't remember or care much. So you get a mixed lot. We just change the Okay. So, Randy, how many miles do you think you've logged on this car, and uh, how has it managed to hold up under all of that travel? There are, it has its moments. Um, but pretty much everything's sound and safe now. The engine's not running too good, but at least it's safe. 240,000 miles now, and there's probably been 